Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel called Statistics from A to Z Confusing Concepts Clarified. These videos are based on content from my book of the same name which is published by Wiley. For more information on the book and these videos please visit statisticsfromatoz.com. This is the fifth video in a playlist on errors in statistics. It is called Margin of Error. Previously, I had uploaded four other videos on errors in statistics. One on the overall concept of errors in statistics, what type of errors are there, how they are used, and any interrelationships. Uh, the other video was on residuals, which are the errors in the regression model. Then standard error, it's in the playlist variation on populations. And the last video was alpha errors and beta errors. As usual in the book and in these videos, we'll start by going quickly through a list of keys to understanding or KTUs. This will give you the overall picture of the concept on a single page. And then we'll go into detailed explanations of each of the keys. For this video, there are only three keys to understanding. The first key is, says, the margin of error, MOE, is one half the width of a two-sided confidence interval. KTU number two says the quote error unquote is not a mistake. Key number three says there are three things that affect the size of the margin of error, S, alpha, and N. And here on one page are all three keys to understanding the concept of margin of error. You may wish to pause the video at this point and read them all together. The margin of error, MOE, is one half the width of a two-sided confidence interval. This is key to understanding number one. A confidence interval is a range of values which comprise an interval estimate. It can be used in inferential statistics instead of hypothesis testing of a point estimate. Here's a graph from the first two videos on confidence intervals. This illustrates the conclusion from which the test can be phrased. With a 95% level of confidence, we estimate the mean height to be 175 centimeters with a margin of error of plus or minus 5 centimeters. Keto understanding number two says the error is not a mistake. The error is simply the sampling error. That is, it's the reduction in accuracy which we expect when we make an estimate based on a portion, a sample, of the data as opposed to counting the entire population or process. If we were able to calculate the statistic using all the data in the population or process, we would not need to take a sample, so there would no sampling error and thus there would be no margin of error. Key number three says there are three things that affect the size of the margin of error. S, which is the sample standard deviation, the critical value, and N, the sample size. This can read readily be seen in the formula for calculating the margin of error. MOE, the margin of error, is equal to S, which is the standard error of the sample, times the critical value divided by the square root of n, which is the sample size. Since the sample standard deviation s is in the numerator, a larger value of s will give a larger value of margin of error, likewise the critical value. On the other hand, n is in the denominator, so a larger value of n, the sample size, will decrease the margin of error. Let's illustrate this. In the graph at left, the curve of distribution is narrow, which is measured in a smaller sample standard deviation. That narrows the margin of error. So a smaller standard deviation results in a smaller MOE. Conversely, with a larger standard deviation, we get a much more spread out curve, and this results in a larger margin of error. In inferential statistics, P is the probability of an alpha error the probability of a false positive. And the Greek letter alpha represents the highest value of P 
that the tester is willing to accept and still be able to conclude that any difference, change, or effect shown in the sample is statistically significant. In these two graphs, the confidence interval is the width of the white area under the curve. In the diagram on the left, alpha was chosen by the tester to be 30%. The unshaded white area is thus 100% minus alpha, or 70%, and the margin of error, MOE, is one half the width of this white area. Now, 30% is, un is an unusually large value for alpha, and it results in an unusually narrow margin of error. Most often, 5% is chosen as the value for the alpha. This, for alpha, this is the situation shown by the diagram on the right. The white area is wider, and the margin of error is half the width of the white area, so the margin of error is larger here than for the case on the left, where alpha is larger. This can probably more simply be portrayed by these two teeter-totters, or totterboards. A small value selected by the tester for alpha on the left results in a larger margin of error, and a large value for alpha on the right gives a smaller margin of error. What if we don't want to accept a larger margin of error or a larger probability of alpha error? Well, sample size is like the universal cure. Collect a larger sample and you avoid a trade-off between a des desired alpha error and a margin of error. With a large enough sample size, you should be able to get both as, as small as you need. Okay, that concludes our video on the margin of error. Here are the others in the playlist on errors and statistics. There are also videos on the other statistical concepts mentioned in this video. For example, alpha, A, P, the p-value, the critical value, and the test statistic, how they work together, confidence intervals, and sample size. These videos are on my YouTube channel, Statistics from A to Z, <clears throat> Confusing Concepts Clarified. Uh, more are planned. See statisticsfromatoz.com slash videos for the latest status of videos completed and planned. If you liked this video, please remember to press the thumbs up like button on your screen below. I'll be making more videos of some or most of the 60 plus concepts in the book if folks like you tell me more videos are wanted. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Also, the website statisticsfromatoz.com has a listing of available and planned videos. Now, videos like this one can be very helpful, but they're not very handy when you want to quickly look up something on the job while studying or during an open book exam. For nothing, for that, nothing beats a book or an ebook. You can also learn more about those on the website. <clears throat> I'd recommend following my blog at statisticsfromatoz.com slash blog. Got some things there that hopefully you'll find interesting, like statistics tips, as well as posts showing you're not alone if you're confused by statistics. I'll also be posting on the Facebook page, Statistics from A to Z, and on Twitter is at Stats A to Z.